Hey, happy Monday. I am Meredith. I am here with our message for the 1st of July, 2024. Happy July, everyone. Brand new month. We've got the sun in Cancer, the moon's in Taurus. We have Pluto in Saturn retrograde, and tomorrow Neptune is going to join the retrograde parade. So Saturn and Neptune both will be retrograde in Pisces. Check it out for yourself big doings. Let's use the retrogrades to our highest and greatest advantage. Taking a look at what's on offer to us today, Lightseer's Tarot. I get more requests for this deck. Thank you, by the way. I love it too. Thanks for requesting. So here we go. Oh, hey. That's like turning over the sunshine right there in the Ten of Cups, starting out with total fulfillment Ace of Cups to the power of 10. Fantastic. This is very fulfilling emotional well-being here in the Ten of Cups and a desire to celebrate, to share, <laughs> to bask in the overflow of all the goodness that's riding the waves on its way into us. All the goodness that is. And then we have the page of wands you've got every reason to bring your enthusiasm nice fresh fiery sassy amazing energy here with the page so pages uh indicate something new something fresh i see them as scouts in a way you know we kind of send their energy out to our own horizon and report you know pages kind of report back what they find so this is our intuitive awareness <clears throat> at work at its finest you know so here's the wave we're riding where we're flowing with our ten of cups and we're checking it out we're going as far as we can to the very edges of our comfort zone and beyond i'd say especially with the page of wands you've got enthusiasm passion creativity motivation, skill, talent, and all of it ready to be engaged in a fresh perspective. And then we have, ooh, the Four of Swords. Very stable card right there in the middle of the reading. And in Lightseer's Tarot, you see a little bit of a, a nod to the Three of Swords, which you know is pain, loss, and sorrow of the past. The Four of Swords is about rest and relaxation for the spiritual warrior, uh, those in the journey, right? And we are resting, we are refreshing, <laughs> examining our retrograde energies, right? So this is a wonderful card because we have mental stability. Fantastic. And we're able to move in this dynamic emotional flow of well-being with enthusiasm and where are we going with it wow right into another page page of pentacles fantastic because this is us investing in what grows so we've got our experience our wisdom our knowledge and we may be applying and or leveraging it on new experiences new choices new developments and this is paired with Excellent. The Knight of Pentacles, slow and steady wins the race. We're not in a rush, which is wonderful, right? There's no need to rush. And I also feel the presence of that amazing Angel Answers card, no need to worry. Because we've got so much experience, wisdom, knowledge to leverage and channel into the now moments, most especially when we are facing fresh opportunity and perspective. So we're taking uh our time we are not being impulsive and the reason we're able to do that is because our 10 of cups brings great stability too because this 10 indicates all of the experience that we have gleaned gained <laughs> and allowed ourselves to receive because I'm coming to, I'm going to come back to this four of swords is recovery in a way, the way it's depicted here artistically, it's recovery in a way from the three of swords. And we've talked about that a great deal when we've seen the devil card, the tower card, the three of swords, the five of cups, 
All of these are, are good challenge cards in tarot. And we've talked about making the most of everything that's on offer to us. The good, the bad, the ugly, the fabulous, the miraculous, right? It all shapes who we are within self-relationship in the moment. And it gets reflected back to us as we go out into the world and interact with everything and everyone. And from there, we make new choices. And we're making choices out of our Ten of Cups. What supports the overflow? What continues to support our overflow of love, bliss, joy, and happiness? Hmm. So while we may uh, venture into new arenas of self-discovery and discovery within our world, what, what works, what fulfills us more, we're still making the best, weaving the fabric of our lives out of every experience, no matter how challenging or how exalted those experiences are. It all gets considered and we turn it into something great for ourselves. So as you know, the Knights move energy between cards. So we're in motion with all of this fabulous energy. Where are we taking it with this night where we are not in any kind of a rush? Seriously right into the Ace of Cups. That is a perfect alignment of cards because that means this Ace of Cups and this Ten of Cups are exactly at the heart of every choice we make. So revisit that Four of Swords and see that little healed up heart in the nest with the character on the card, having had the experience of great challenge and overcoming greater challenges likely made worse at times by our own egos, right? We've overcome that. And now we can proceed uh, in a way that suits us without rushing. And again, not being impetuous, not being, not yielding to the temptation of ego chatter. So this is us really reinvesting, thank you, page of pentacles in ourselves, in our ace of cups. So we've also run the suit between this ace and this 10. So we have the fullness of the suit of cups here in the main body of the reading. And this is tremendously supportive to everything we foster in heart space. Let's take a look at what's on the bottom of the deck. How are we being served behind the scenes by the multiverse? And what are we not necessarily aware of? Knight of Swords. <laughs> We're being direct which is excellent. I like that too. Being direct is a fantastic way to navigate this lovely alignment. So again, there's no rushing. There's no impetuous and temptation or impetuousness or temptation for us to lean into egoically speaking. And we're also not waiting around. So while the Knight of Pentacles is considered the slowest mover of them all. You also have the speed and the swiftness of the Knight of Swords. He's definitely the point A to point B, no must, no fuss type of knight. And that's excellent because that means we're being exceptionally decisive in our emotional and our mental stability. Where are we going with that knight? Ooh, right into the Six of Swords. Yes, moving on to greener pastures. You know, we, we leave challenging uh, experiences behind us. We take the very best of them, turn them into something else that serves us. So there's a lot of transformation between these two cards here. This also means we don't linger, nor do we wallow in energies that have challenged us. We accept the challenge with some sort of appreciation and gratitude that continues to fuel the happiness that comes out of the Ace and the Ten of Cups and that Page of Wands over there. Perfect. Right into the Ten of Pentacles. Could you ask for better right there? That's the everything card. That's our happiness fulfilled, recognized, manifested on our foundation. This is our legacy of happiness. Beautiful. This is exactly what we're moving into with the Six of Swords in a very stable way as anchored by uh, this Four of Swords. Great, great energy there. Then we have the Nine of Swords. That's the Anxiety card. And then the Seven of Cups. Excellent. You know, those two cards would be considered just a tiny bit of... Um, 
challenge within the reading. And that Nine of Swords is indicative of what ego chatter can do. It can bring us to an anxious point, keep us awake at night, or have us obsessing over particular experiences or, you know, we're too hyper-focused on some thought that we've had. And in this lineup of cards, I really like seeing that Nine of Swords because it gives perspective from where we've been, what we recovered from out of that four of swords. You know, the, the heart there that's in the nest with the character is indicative of the three of swords, as I mentioned before. And this is with the nine here on the other side of the 10 of pentacles with the nine of swords on the other side of that, there's a bit of reflection going on there and the potentiality in the seven of cups to stall, to linger to allow confusion or just simple not knowing uh, to hold us back and create a level of procrastination that doesn't necessarily serve our destination. So if you find yourself there uh, really feeling tentative because your memory field is bringing up some nine of swords, three of swords, life experience. You have a new choice to make. That's what this seven of cups indicates for us. And what do we do when we see the seven of cups? We choose with our heart. What happens when we choose with our heart? We get the 10 of cups, ace of cups, right? So continue to follow your heart, allow space for the nine of swords to show itself. Recognize that all of this can coexist. One doesn't ruin the other, you know. Uh, <laughs> you're not necessarily going to have a bad day over that nine of swords. You're going to have a moment of gratitude and appreciation for how far you've come and everything that you've healed in your self-relationship that's created such a wonderful legacy of happiness that we've got the Ten of Cups pouring out the Ace of Cups to the power of Ten while we consider how to reinvest in that. Wow. Fabulous. All right, Angel Answers. Put your questions, queries, requests for confirmations to this deck. Remain positive. Mm -hmm. That's what moves the Wheel of Fortune is our positivity and our happiness. Well, you know, I suppose our shattered, upset ego <laughs> could move it too, but not necessarily in a direction we'd like. And that may be the moment of pause and fear. I also feel here that this card indicates uh, a communication. And maybe we've been afraid to say something. And now we're not. And we have to make a choice on exactly how to express ourselves here. So... Remain positive. That's the way to go. I also feel the energy of Ho'oponopono. Maybe we're forgiving ourselves something on this, uh, this Nine of Swords. If you believe, what do you believe? Is it in keeping with your heart space? Or is it a soundbite from another time that belongs to another soul? Check it out. What do you believe? Is it working for you? If it isn't, how do you shift that? Sweet, simple, yes. Ooh, another card flying out of the deck. Take action. There's our Knight of Swords. There's our Knight of Pentacles. See, we're not gathering any moss here. We're totally being rolling stones. I feel like there's one more in the deck. And then we have, it's up to you. Everything is up to you. It's your choice. It's your decision. You are not a victim to the whims of other folks. Oop, wrong deck. Final word on the reading. <laughs> From Angels and Ancestors. How's our soulful presence informing our waking consciousness? We have the snake. Shedding an old skin, definitely done here in the Four of Swords, and it has created 
a beautiful ten of cups situation and if you have an old skin to shed it will be revealed to you on that nine of swords and a new decision to be made grounded in your heart space all right everybody have a beautiful monday thank you as always for joining me peace love happiness namaste